Hi guys, this is Dr. Rob Sivers, uh, the Carb Addiction Doc, but today we're talking about something that's more immediately important, and that is COVID. And today's episode is COVID nicotine, smoking, vaping. I, I don't know where the hell this concept came from that kids are immune. Kids are immune to COVID. Yes, they are more likely to have a, a, a milder course. So being younger is a value because your immune system isn't as ramped up, your comorbid diseases aren't as severe, but there is something that kids are doing right now and probably in isolation doing even more that puts them in the highest, highest risk category. And that is the consumption of nicotine. And I don't care how nicotine goes into your face, whether it goes in as a patch, whether it goes in as a cigarette, chewing tobacco, snuff, and the biggest, most prevalent issue is vaping. The problem is not smoking. Yes, it makes it a little worse. The problem is nicotine. Nicotine has exactly the same effect on your blood vessel cells, on your endothelial cells, as sugar does. But not only that, if you are inhaling that nicotine, what nicotine also does is it paralyzes the sweeping effect that occurs in your lungs. So the way your lungs work is every cell in your lungs and in your airways has these little hairs. They're called cilia. And your lungs produce mucus that traps foreign things. So let's say you breathe in some coronavirus. At first, it gets trapped in that mucus. And then these cilia act like a wave and they push that mucus away and you cough that out, you spit that out. It clears the lower parts of your airways, gets trapped in the upper part. It doesn't affect the lungs at the organ level. It affects the pipes. The problem is that nicotine in part paralyzes those cilia. So now instead of these waves blowing or, or, or getting all this trapped COVID in the mucus out of your system and causing a much milder response in your lungs, now those cilia are just paralyzed. And that mucus is just sitting there, that COVID virus is having a party in your lungs, and it is going everywhere in your lungs. And I don't care how old you are, nicotine entry into your system causes paralysis of those uh, cilia in the lungs and increases your risk of a higher, more severe infection. It increases the rate of clinical infection and definitely, absolutely is one of the most powerful things that you can do to, to assure yourself that you're going to have a very severe course. So please, kids, please, everybody, quit vaping, quit smoking. There's so many benefits. And the only value of smoking is as an emotion management system. Same thing with carbohydrates, but find other things to do. Get rid of your vaping, get rid of your smoking, get rid of your snuff, get rid of nicotine from your system. Your life may depend on it. Not only does it affect the lungs, but it also affects all the blood vessels in the body. Nicotine causes your endothelial cells to round up, causes an inflammation of your endothelial cells. And what we find in the most severe cases of COVID disease, not only is it lungs, but they're getting something called myocarditis, inflammation of the heart, so that the heart can't work properly. Well, the heart is the central blood vessel. And nicotine raises your risk. Please, guys, I know that between 30 and 50% of high school kids in America vape. Please, 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 guys, quit now. It is not worth it. It really isn't worth it. Don't think you're immune. Your risk as a child, as a young person, is much lower. But when you vape, when you eat a lot of sugar and starch, you take that risk and you put yourself in the highest category where you should be in the lowest category. Please listen. Because by the time you get the virus... I don't want you to have regrets. No parent should ever bury their kids. This virus enters your body through any crevice, any break, and any mucous membrane it can. And the reason why the virus is so virulent is because it's got a new form of protein on the outside, little hooks that in a very powerful way attach 
very readily and very tightly to receptors on your cell, to your cell membrane, and then they enter your cell and that's where they divide and cause the damage. And the critical thing to understand is what pathways of entry the virus has so that you can protect yourself effectively. The virus does not, as far as you are aware, cross intact skin. The virus does not cross intact skin. It may get trapped on your skin, it may live on your skin, and the single best thing you can do to get rid of it, to kill it on your skin, you can't really kill it because it's not alive, but to destroy it on your skin is to use soap or alcohol on your skin on a regular basis and that gets rid of the capsule of the virus. And that destroys the virus. So it may be sitting on your skin, but it doesn't have access except under these conditions. If you have breaks in your skin, your skin it protects you against so many different things. But if you have cuts, if you have abrasions, if you have inflammation of your skin, any scabs, any cuts, any breaks, that is an access point for the virus. So please, 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 if you have an access point like that, even if you're a big tough person, put a damn band-aid on it, put a cover on it, put a piece of tape over cuts on your skin, at least until your skin seals up because that is an entry point and you increase your risk of getting infected just through air spread. The second place that the most common place that we get the virus is by sucking it into our mouth, into our nose, into our lungs. When you breathe, it's a negative pressure that sucks that in deep into our um, respiratory system, nose, mouth, esophagus into the gut. And that is the commonest, most easily uh, uh, affected way. So wearing a mask helps you just a little bit. But really, the value of a mask is not of regular masks, regular paper masks, is not to reduce the external infection. It does a little bit, but it really is to prevent you from spreading it to other people. So it's bi-directional and it is incumbent. If you care about people, wear a damn mask. Wear a mask when you go out. However, other entry points, other entry points, your eyes. So... It is important to protect your eyes if you're going to be ex exposed to the virus, especially in the air. The mucous membranes of your eyes, while there are some uh, immune surveillance in your eyes and there is fluid in there that may potentially reduce the risk of infection, you can infect yourself through your eyes, through that mucous membrane in your eyes. So that is a problem area and that's why goggles are so important. But the other places where this virus hides, it hides in your hair. It can get in through your ears. And in particular, if your hands have touched the virus, even if, remember, the virus can live a long time on your skin without actually causing an infection. But guess what you do? You do this, you do that. I know that I'm, my hands are clean. I've washed them a few minutes ago with soap and water. But if you access the virus that's on your skins into your mucous membranes, you rub your eyes, you are going to get infected. And one of the lessons, the powerful lessons that we've learned from China is that the way they protected their workers was with personal protective equipment that covered themselves from head to tail. Think about a scuba diver going deep under the water. They are covered into freezing water. You are covered from head to toe. That is the only effective way you can protect yourself when you come into contact with a virus, whether you're a healthcare worker or whether you're a public citizen. And in fact, for healthcare workers, and I'm a surgeon, the greatest risk for us is aerosolized particles of COVID. AGP, aerosol generating procedures. When we cut on people, when we are putting trachs into people, when we're doing surgery on people, when we're doing procedures on people, even putting IVs and things in, we have direct access to that virus in its most active form. And what the Chinese did and what we are not able to do effectively here is they used positive pressure whenever they did AGPs. That means you've got a pipe of oxygen or a pipe of air blowing positive pressure into that suit, blowing the virus out, not allowing access within that suit. We don't have access to that equipment in this country. 
we don't have access, adequate access, as physicians, as healthcare workers in this country. And we're way, 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 way behind on that access. The hospital that I work at just put out a bulletin saying that you've got a mask, an N95 mask, that you have to use for an entire week. Your protective outer covering that doesn't even necessarily cover your entire body. It should cover everywhere here with the, with the N95 mask and goggles over the face and sealed. That protective equipment you have to wear for an entire shift. Well, you're walking around, you're working really hard, you're getting nicks and tears in that gown. You should be able to replace it. No replacement. The Chinese were very adamant about double gloving because we often get little breaks in our gloves. I'm a surgeon, I operate. It is very common during surgery to get little nicks in your gloves and have to replace your gloves. Well, not allowed to do that, not allowed to double glove, and also double booties. Because as you're walking around, you get scuffs under your feet, you get scuffs in your, in your boots. So have a double protection. Because of the shortage, we are not allowed to double glove, we're not allowed to double boot, and we have to wear our outer protective garments for an entire shift. That is how desperate we are for the correct equipment. It is not just about masks. Everyone's mask obsessed. It's not just about masks. It's about goggles. It's about entire body protection. And I can tell you this, when you come into the people out there as a lay person, stay the hell away. Stay a massive distance away from them. And if you have to work with them, if you have to care for a loved one, protect yourself head to toe because you will get infected. One quarter over 5,000 people of the healthcare workers in Italy are right now infected. They're infected. And if one or two percent of those people die, that's a hell of a lot of healthy healthcare workers that have exposed themselves to their patients and they are going to die because they did not have adequate protective garments. Can you imagine the US military going to war, war with blanks? Or hey guys, everybody else has got a gun, here's a knife for you. Or you get one bullet. You're allowed to use one bullet for your entire tour in the field. That is unimaginable, and yet that is how we're managing our doctors. Come on, guys. Let's step this up. How much toilet paper do you really need? Number one. Number two is everybody should have a mask and probably goggles. At least one. Use it pertinently. We've seen that in Singapore. Number two is keep yourself isolated. Keep away from other people. Big distances. Do you really want to bring home disease, not only to yourself, but also to your family, to your loved ones, to your neighbors? Do you want to be that person that infected everybody else? Remember the average COVID person, COVID infected person, as far as we know, infects between four and eight other people because this disease is not recognized when it is infectious. You don't even know you have it and yet you can spread it to other people. So please, please, please have an empathetic social conscience. Even if you're a risk taker yourself, even you think, ha, 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 I'm immune. The person next to you, the person beside you, the person you will come into contact with may not be so lucky. Let's have a collective social conscience and be decent. Don't overbuy stuff. The more carnivorous you are, the easier you can stock your fridge and you can sit there for a long time and eat meat. Plus, it is immunoprotective. But the final thing is this. There are a ton of medications that people think protect them. Please, please, please don't stockpile them. Whether they have value or not is yet to be determined. But if we don't have the drugs, we're never going to be able to use them in the people that most need them. Selfishness is crippling us and making this epidemic a lot worse. 
If you have chloroquine at home, if you have z packs at home that you haven't used yet, see if there's a place where you can get them to. Ask the hospitals if they need help by getting those drugs to them. I don't know if those drugs are effective. We really don't know. But at least let them be used on the sickest people. Please be mindful of this. Protect yourself so that you protect others. Don't overutilize the resources. And don't be a hero. Your cape will not protect you.